Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be taking a look at Seb's Necrophos. This is a hero that I think is very good in pubs right now. It's a very easy hero to play, generally has a high pub win rate, and so I just want to break down the skill build, item build, talent build, and general gameplay tips that you guys can implement into your gameplay, and let's get into it. By the way guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff, I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there, and now let's get into the video. All right, so first let's get into the starting item build and then go from where he kind of just goes with his item. So first things first, he goes with a heavy right click build. This is exactly how I like to play my ranged off laners as well. And the main reason for that is you really want to put a lot of pressure on your opponents, especially when you're in a winning lane. So for instance, against something like a Spectre, I really, really like to put a lot of emphasis on buying stats and right clicking the Spectre as he doesn't have a great way to fight back. Frankly, he's laning with a Marcy. And Necrophos Marcy is just one of the best lanes in the game. The fact that you can toss them into the creep wave, constantly heal your creep wave and nuke out the enemy wave means you're always going to have a creep advantage as long as the Marcy is in lane. At this current point in time, he's getting zoned out by Tusk and Spectre, but the main reason why Necrophos really is a lane dominator outside of the fact that he has constant sustain once he hits level 2 is the fact that when he's doing damage to the enemy, he's also doing damage to the enemy creeps and healing his creeps. And if you think about it, that's just going to create a situation where the enemy basically can never trade because they're never going to have more creeps than you. Now, getting into items, we have very weird items coming out from Seb this game. Definitely an off-brand build, but let's talk about why it's good. So the first thing he does is he goes a Wraith Bat. This one might seem really suspect. You might be like, speed, this seems absolutely horrendous, but I will say a couple of good things about it that maybe make it have some viability. Number one, as I talked about earlier, his main gist of this lane is going to be to auto-attack the Spectre. I said it. I said it earlier and I'll say it again for the last time. This hero just beats Spectre in lane. Necro has always been one of the hardest Spectre counters in the game. Number one, because you can kill him in the mid game with your Reaper Scythe, but most importantly, if you lane against him, you kind of just dominate Spectre. There's absolutely no way Spectre can ever chip you down, and so you chip him down and kill him, and we'll see that a lot during this lane. And basically, Wraithban lets you double down on that. While Null Talismans are not bad, they don't give you a lot of attack speed. You have to keep in mind if you build a Null Talisman, let's quickly look at the stats, you get only 2 Agi, which is 2 attack speed. However, if you buy a Wraith Pan, you get 5 Agi and 5 attack speed, meaning you get 8 more attack speed from a Wraith Pan. That's quite significant, and it's going to let you fit in a couple more auto attacks in between creeps, because the main goal during the laning stage is to get every single CS, every single deny, and hit the opponent all at the same time. Necro is a very, very busy hero, and so having the extra attack speed, even if it's only eight, is very significant. And Necro is a very low armor hero, so the Wraithman helps. Now, once you hit level four, I just wanna talk about two main things. If you hit level four and you feel like you can die very easily in the lane, please take Go Shroud. It's very, very good. <laughs> a lot of people just don't skill it. It almost makes your healing double. So if you're getting gone on, you pop your death pulse, you pop your wand, and you're totally fine. Uh, so just keep that in mind. In a lane like this where he's against a Tusk Spectre and there's no way he can die, it's much, much better that he takes Heartstopper Aura to put more pressure and heal up a little bit. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. He's able to take down the Spectre, take down Matumba Man, and continue to farm it up. So as much as I don't like this skill build because it doesn't involve any points in the Ghost Shroud and that can often get you killed, when you're snowballing and having a god tier lane, you should go this route. Now, moving ahead, you want to amplify your farm as much as possible, and so he even just took the small camp after getting the kill on the Spectre, but the main gist is to put pressure on your opponent. What most people do wrong is they kind of just sit still as Necro. You're going to notice if, as we watch this a little bit, every time Seb is in attack range from a Tumma Man and there isn't a Deny or CS he has to go for, he's going to hit the Spectre. And as simple as this sounds, most players are just really trash at it. And so keep that in mind during your games. Really try to put pressure whether or not you're against a Wraith King or a Spectre, any other hero that you naturally can just bully out for the most part, do so. Next up, as we get into our next kill onto the Matumba Man Spectre, I do just want to mention his item build here, his phase boots. So 
two things. Number one, we'll get into the phase boots in a second, but number one, I want to cover the Reaper Scythe usage here. You'll see in this laning stage, he just kind of uses it. Spectre's not in range, right? I, I think any Necrophos player, anyone who even knows anything about Necro, knows this wouldn't kill the Spectre. But keep in mind, it's still a stun. It's, in fact, it's a pretty long duration stun. It's a 1.5 second stun. That's very significant, guys. So in the early game, don't worry too much about the added respawn timer. As useful as it is, if you know, the Spectre's gonna get away or someone has a disengage spell, whether or not it's a Puck Blink or a Quap Blink or whatever, you know, and any of the disengage spells. Don't be afraid to use a Reaper Scythe to set up for your next Q or to lock someone down for a different spell. And now the Phase Boots. So why Phase Boots? Well, it's really simple, but I really like Phase Boots almost every single game. In general, I actually think that <laughs> like Mana Boots on Necro is just plain trash. I just think it's awful. If you go Meta Boots on Necro, you're not tanky at all, right? You're not tanky at all. You don't even need the mana regen if you're good at last hitting and denying. So if you feel like, oh, but I keep running out of mana, it's you. <laughs> it's You don't even need the item. It's just you. As long as you get the occasional deny, maybe the occasional kill. You don't even need the occasional kill. But the occasional deny, you're going to be fine in terms of mana. I mean, as I say that, we watch a clip where he actually runs out of mana, which is hilarious. The majority of the time, you're not going to run out of mana. He happened to like really hard commit on the Spectre and unfortunately not get the kill there. So yes, you can run out of mana. I know people in the comments, uh, speed, blah, 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 Just buy phase boots. You're not going to be able to chase people down. The purpose of Necro in the early game is to be this kite hero, right? If you don't have phase boots, and this Wraith Band to be fair, you're going to be a 6 armor hero with low movement speed. He even goes Wind Lace, okay? And a Fluffy Hat, which is going to build into this, this later um, this later four staff. He is doubling down on early game items, and I love this because I think what most people do is they're just this slow necro who only can push in creep waves. That's like it. And then the only way you kill anybody is if they suck. Okay, so you might be like, oh, but then it doesn't matter because my opponents do suck and so I'll kill them regardless. The thing is you'll get even more kills if you go this build. Next up, let's get into a bit of Necro gameplay. He's won his lane, just naturally out sustaining the Spectre. I absolutely just completely despise this skill build so much. I get it, but ugh, dude, I, I hate no point in Shroud. Either way, the main thing you want to do, he takes the tower. Main thing you want to do, farm, okay? Farm. What Necro does best is being basically a wall. You'll see that the CK comes to lane and he's just gonna bully him out. Why? Because you can, and no one can fight you back. And so Necro's biggest advantage is he zones people out of areas, makes it uncomfortable for them to farm in the area, and then continues to farm the area. A lot of farming. But that's the point. Most people fall behind and they just go for kills. This isn't a great mentality. You should try to bait ganks and kick people out of the safe farm while you take it as well, and you're going to have really, really good games. In fact, look at Seb's net worth right now. He has 7,000 net worth at 12 minutes. The average is more so around 5k, as you can see. He's at 7,000. And now you can imagine the impact you're going to be able to have when you have this many items and this much XP. Also, in terms of talents, he does take his talents early on. He takes the Reaper Scythe cast range. Personally, I think strength isn't bad as well, especially if your game isn't going nearly as well and you feel like, once again, they have heroes that kill you, for instance, a Batrider or a Pugna or something along those lines. You can opt for the strength just to make sure you stay alive. This game, it's a very good Necro game. The enemy team is like mostly physical damage, which obviously you counter. He has a four staff, he has a Yule, a lot of kite items, and then he has Ghost Shroud. So it's a very good Necro game, and he can go for the more offensive talent. But yeah, no joke, he's been bottom for 14 minutes straight. I just know for a fact, a lot of people are going to be like, if Seb was in their pub, they would flame him for being AFK. Like, no joke, no joke. They would flame him for being AFK. They'd be like, you're AFK. If they didn't know it was Seb, they would be like, you're AFK. And that's the thing, like, this is how these heroes generally have to play. You just need to get bait. You need to hit timings, because otherwise, if you roam, you don't do anything. All right, so let's move ahead towards his level 15 talent, his next set of items, and then a team fight. So number one, he went four staff Yules and Ashivas. The four staff, in my opinion, is just kind of this item that's really good against burst damage comps. I, I think it's particularly good against Tusk as well, and Tusk is really the main initiating hero of the enemy team, at least the one that's largely going to be going on him. Voice Spirit is as well, but four staff can let you get out of the way of both these heroes' initiations, assuming the Void Spirit doesn't have a Yules, which he doesn't. 
And so essentially, Seb can almost always get away. It's also just a really good disengage item in the early game. It's very cheap. And when you're playing the, the area in which you want to farm, what we talked about beforehand, if you have the four staff early on, which, which you're going to, assuming you win your lane or do okay, it's almost impossible for you to be ganked, so that makes the game really nice. After that is Yules. This is kind of just your mana item to farm. It's your disengage item as well in team fights. And I would say most importantly is the Shivas this game, which is definitely for the game. Don't buy Shivas every single match, but it is a fantastic necro item. So now you might be wondering why is Shivas a fantastic necro item? Well, it's particularly good this game. I talked about earlier how necro has bad armor, so that's definitely one of the portions. He literally only has seven base armor, all of his other armor is from items, <laughs> literally. Now, Shiva's this game. He's against the Spectre, Illusions, a CK, Illusions, Tusk, physical damage, Dawnbreaker, heal, right? <laughs> so even CK is a heal hero. This is a fantastic Shiva's game. On top of that, Necro is a hero that naturally gets kited very easily. It's just how it is. And you'll see in this team fight here, he pops his Ghost Shroud, pops his Shiva's, and is just doing a ridiculous amount of AoE damage with the Shivas, with the Death Pulse, and of course with the Heartstopper Aura passive. Everyone is just ticking. The Spectre's taking 10 a second, CK 11, Tusk 5, Dawnbreaker 7, and so on. And they're just getting absolutely melted. Almost to the point where, well, actually to the point where he, he kind of killed everybody. He kind of killed everybody. And then he gets a Scythe off onto the CK. And now they managed to win a very convincing fight in a game where he was behind on net worth. So you can see the power of hitting the Shiva's guard timing. They commit on him, he just completely slows all of their attack speed and movement speed. They can't get on top of him and eventually due to his passive and his active death pulse, he's able to get off a really nice scythe, heal up and go back to farming, which is kind of what you do for the most part. Just like farm a lot and push in the dangerous farm because you can and other heroes can't. Now he ends up going a Kaya Sanj as his next item, and you're really gonna see the impact of that item come into play here. He also bought a shard, I think he bought it around the 25 minute mark. Essentially, if you don't know what Necro Shard does, is it gives you another death pulse that also causes enemies to become ethereal and reduces their magic resistance. So bas basically it's like, a, it's like an AoE ethereal blade is how you should look at it. And it's really good for clearing waves and dealing with illusions and team fights or just like right clickers in general. So it's extremely good this game. But you'll notice in this clip here, he gets stunned for three seconds by the CK, but because he has a Kaya Sanj, he's particularly tanky in terms of health points, but also he has that Satter's assist and that allows him to barely stay alive. Obviously Bane helped him as well. So shout out the Bane, <laughs> but this allows him to get off the Yules, then his W and then his heal. And all of a sudden he's half HP absolutely vibing. Also, I think that the, the Kaya Sanj amplifies your healing. I don't know if it exactly works with every single one of his forms of healing, but assuming it does, it's 22% extra healing on every single form, and that's fantastic. And the last thing I want you guys to understand about Necro is kind of like your goal as a frontliner, because Necro is a ranged frontliner, right? That's how you should generally look at this hero. And you're gonna see in this fight here, what he does best is he gets Ganon in a position where his team can counter initiate. So eventually you'll see his Mercy's gonna go down, right? And now he's basically gonna force staff his Quap, put himself in a very bad situation by force staffing the Quap and not himself. But the thing is, because it's not too far away and because he kited out and didn't continue to chase as his PA Roshans, eventually his team's gonna be able to follow it up and protect him. And you can see once again, the hard stopper just doing a ton of damage. If you don't realize how much damage it's actually doing, you kind of just have to look at a hero like CK who happens to be in the radius. Once he walks in the aura range, which he does in this moment here, it's just gonna start ticking and you can see his HP is going down by about what I would say is like 80 damage per second. And this is applying to every single hero in the radius. And yeah, you just kind of slowly die. With Armalit on, CK is just like ticking for 120 essentially, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, once again, he's going to live another initiation, get off another last second scythe, and they're going to manage to win what is basically the game winning fight. On top of that, even goes Aeon Disc this game. I generally wouldn't recommend buying this item unless they've been bursting you, which the enemy team has been trying to burst Seb from full. But you can see that his items doesn't consist of like some shitty ass early heart. You need to buy these two to 4K gold items. Even Shiva's is about a 4K gold item. I think it's 4,600 to really hit spikes on this hero. Buying like really expensive items on Necro delays your major timings and doesn't allow you to be the frontliner consistently in the mid game that you generally want to be for your team. All right, and that's going to be about the end of today's replay analysis. 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you're inspired to play some Necro. I will cover his talents very briefly as we ended off. At level 15, he took the Ghost Shroud Slow, which I'm a huge fan of. It's a very, very significant slow. The Death Pulse Heal being only 32 flat is frankly kind of trash. At level 20, he takes Magic Resist. Honestly, this depends on the game. I think the Heartstopper Regen Reduction is actually generally better. I'm even surprised he didn't take it this game with the Lifesteal of the CK, the Dawnbreaker being on the enemy team. I, I personally feel like it's very, very strong. He doesn't think so. But he was also worried about frontlining and not getting bursted this game, so I can completely get behind the 15% magic resist when his main goal was to live. And there was multiple fights where he lived on 3 400 HP, so the 15% magic resist absolutely came into play. And finally, at level 25, the death pulse cooldown is just better. It's more damage, more healing, and most importantly, lets you clear creep waves in timely fashion, as well as farm more camps, which yes, matters a lot in the late game. And alright, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel, and I'm out. Peace! And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.